Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna talk about full funnel retargeting. So we've already talked about how to create specific audiences based off of the content that people visit on your website and how important it is to retarget them with a specific offer, such as a lead magnet, something that's enticing and really specific to what they already read on your website. So after that though, where does retargeting go after that? And this is really where most people are leaving money on the table because they're not retargeting throughout their marketing funnel. They're using traffic to really get people to the top of the funnel, but they're not using retargeting um, to move them from one step to the next in the marketing funnel. And they're leaving a lot of money on the table. So this video is all about full funnel retargeting. And it's all about retargeting from your offers, right? So we're going to look at this in terms of, uh, you know, a marketing funnel at Digital Marketer, um, you know, going from a lead magnet to a low dollar offer um, to a larger offer, a larger offer, et cetera. So how can we use dynamic retargeting uh, to remind people to move to the next step? Um, and it's very easy, and I'll show you exactly how to set it up in, in Facebook, but what I want you to, to get out of this and, and the importance is that your marketing funnel is going to look different, right? It's, it's probably going to be different. Every business has a different marketing funnel. But what's important is that you're using retargeting to say, you know, I want to run an ad to people who hit this first offer but didn't make it to the next offer, right? And we can set up audiences based off of that logic. I want people who visited this offer but not the next. I want people who visited this offer but not the next. So maybe they landed on the lead magnet landing page but they didn't hit the tripwire sales page, which means they didn't take action. Um, they didn't take that first action. So we would run a retargeting ad to those people reminding them to take that specific action. The same thing as you move through the funnel. Um, maybe they landed on the Tripwire sales page um, and they didn't buy, they, or they didn't take whatever action was asked of them on that page. So they didn't make it over to the next page. Um, so we're gonna run an ad that says, I want people who hit that, you know, that, that, tripwire sales page minus the core offer sales page. That's a retargeting ad to remind them to take that next step. So you'll see how it applies throughout the marketing funnel. No matter what you're offering, you just have to understand the logic of, I want people who landed here, uh, but didn't land here, didn't take the next step. And all of these are going to be different retargeting ads to push people um, to the next offer. So here's exactly how to set these up, right? So I'm gonna use the example of our Facebook ad template. So we have this landing page, right? And that's going to be this lead magnet landing page. I'm also pulling up the Tripwire sales page so I can show you exactly how we would set up this first ad. And every ad is set up the same as you move down the funnel. We're, of course, just going to change the URLs uh, based off of what it would, whatever step they're on. So if we're in the audiences tab of the ads manager, we're gonna go to create audience, custom audience, website traffic. And this is where we're gonna start using the logic of people who visit specific web pages, but not others. So both of these are gonna be URL equals. So include people who visit any web page that meet the following criteria. Okay, we're gonna pull this part of the URL past the root domain. And then we're going to exclude people, right? Because we don't want people who took action. We're, we're trying to target people who landed on this page but didn't take the next step. 
So we're going to exclude people who hit this page because this is where they would have landed if they did take that step. We'll go ahead and put that URL in. You can keep the audience for up to 180 days, but with full funnel retargeting, I really suggest you do something like 14 days or 30 days. If you have a lot of traffic to your website, um, I would do something like 14 days uh, because you can you can really afford to keep it fresh and, and really only retarget those last two weeks. Um, but if you want to keep them a little longer, do something like uh, 30 days. We, we definitely don't want to um, hound people with, with these offers. So you're just going to name this Facebook ad templates, whatever your offer is, uh, didn't opt in or didn't sign up for the webinar, whatever that action is that you're wanting them to take, um, that's what you're going to name the audience. So you'll create audience and then, um, you know, depending on the level of traffic, um, you either need, you know, 20 people who are pixeled and who haven't taken, um, who didn't take the action and, and you know, give it about an hour or two for the audience to populate. Um, so it's either going to, excuse me, it's either going to populate in one to two hours if you do have enough traffic or you need to give it enough time for about 20 people um, who haven't taken the action uh, to, to really get that audience to populate. But you're going to create an audience for each step of your funnel, right? So that you can retarget and you can ask them to take that next step. Um, so just like we created this first retargeting ad for people that didn't opt in, you would do that for each step of the funnel um, where they didn't take the action. So go ahead and, and create those audiences if you do have the URLs for each step of your marketing funnel and let those start to populate. But what's the most important about those is that they're automatically updating. So once the audience has been created here in Facebook or in Google or wherever you're creating the audience, it's going to continue to update. So if someone does go back and take um, and they do take that action, they'll be removed from the audience. So this is set on autopilot. You don't have to go back and update the audience. That's very, very powerful. So now let's take a look at what these ads would look like, right? So you know how to set up the audiences. What do the ads actually look like? So on the left would be an ad that it, to bring people um, really into the funnel, right? Maybe you're retargeting people who have, um, you know, hit content on your website um, or you're, you're bringing in cold traffic. So you'll notice we did so, you know, in the ad to the left. This is for our lead magnet, 212 blog post ideas. Um, this ad um, is, is would have been either the first or second ad that that someone saw. On the right, this is our ad for for our funnel targeting, right? So this is if someone um, you know opted in and they didn't buy the low dollar offer. So see how similar these ads are, right? So this first ad brought them to the lead magnet landing page, and this second ad on the right, is going to bring them back to the Tripwire sales page if they didn't buy. So what's important is that we really kept congruency in the ads. Um, notice that we used Ryan in both ads, um, and they're similar, but they're also different. That's what's important. They're similar, but they're different. This first ad is promoting 212 blog post ideas, and the second one is promoting the Tripwire. Um, so, you know, we wanted someone to say, hey, I've seen something like this before, um, but this is different, right? So that's very, very important. Here's another example. On the left, this ad would have brought them to the lead magnet landing page. On the right, this ad would have brought them to the tripwire sales page if they didn't buy the first time. So notice that they're similar, but they're also different. Very important to maintain congruency and branding, but to also make sure the end user realizes this isn't the same ad. You'll also notice on these funnel retargeting ads, on both of these, we use the same exact copy. 
Did life get in the way? You forgot to take advantage of this deal. You can use that copy for each of these retargeting ads as long as it's applicable to your funnel. And the reason you can do that is because we're not assuming that they said no, right? We're not saying, hey, you said no. Um, you, do you want to say yes? Um, we're not assuming that. We're just assuming that they didn't have time to take the action, right? They didn't have time to do whatever we asked them to do um, on the next page. So this copy really speaks to that. Did life get in the way? You forgot to take advantage of this deal. And we use that copy for each of our dynamic funnel targeting ads for each step of the way. So definitely write that down, guys. Feel free to use that copy um, on all of your, your funnel retargeting ads as long as it's applicable. So just to wrap that up, um, and for this video, you're going to create a dynamic custom audience, whether you're in Facebook or, or Google, whatever traffic platform, you want to create an audience that is dynamic and it changes based off the user behavior. So if they landed on the lead magnet or landing page and they didn't opt in, we're going to have an ad that's dynamically retargeting there, them right there. The same thing for the next step of the funnel. So these audiences are dynamically, dynamically going to update and these ads will constantly run to remind people to take the next step. 